Hi everyone, it's Charlotte Baker Jackson, The Candid Recruiter. Welcome to another edition of my show, my YouTube show. I'm very excited about today because this is my area of expertise and my wheelhouse. And so my guest is an HR expert as well. And we're gonna be talking about human resources. It's a very layered, layered department. Uh, and so we're gonna kind of break down all those different layers and then talk a little bit about uh, my guest who I'm excited to introduce, a, a dear friend and colleague of mine, Tanisha Polofsky. Hi, Hi Charlotte. So Tanisha, I think that before we get started, we should probably break down for the audience uh, who you are, uh, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about how we met. So tell us who you are first. Okay, um, Charlotte, first off, Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I'm Tanisha Polowski. I work in HR, um, primarily in operations and employee relations um, for a media company. And I've known Sharla for years. We used to work together yes. um, many times. <laughs> yes. So we have an interesting story uh, on how we met. We were, we met in orientation. We met over email. You sent me an email when I started at a company and um, from there, when we met at orientation, you were starting as well as a full-time employee at the company. So we sat through orientation together and then we worked together instantly, just you know, had a great working relationship, worked together and then I left and went to another company. Mm -hmm. You stayed, but then I quickly recruited you. Yes. <laughs> And then we both ended up back at the original company. Yep. And then prior to that, before we even knew one another existed, we both worked at Fox literally right. like I think weeks or months of one another. So yeah, I think that you had just left me. when I started. Yes. So our paths were destined to cross. Yes. So Tanisha, today I'm excited to talk a little bit about uh, our field and in, in, uh, career of choice. Yeah, resources. I know that you have a very background. You've done some amazing things in HR, and so I thought first let's start about start uh, with talking about a little bit more of uh, what human resources is in terms of the different departments. So everyone knows HR, and they think, okay, that's where if you get in trouble <laughs> at work, yeah. HR comes, right? And yeah. that is a part of human resources. You know, if there are disciplinary issues. The human resources team does really work with management to resolve those matters, whatever they may be. So that would be more of the employee relations piece. But yes. there's any other parts, and you've uh, really grown as a professional more along the uh, operations, human resources operations side. So tell us a little bit about the uh, team that you are currently uh, working with in terms of what you're doing on a day to day. Yeah, I mean, operations has so many fields, especially nowadays. Um, depending on where you work, it can be categorized as like generalist, um, operations, um, and HRS at the same time. So right. a lot of it is the back end of what you don't see, what employees don't see. So making sure that data is correct in the system from an employee's tenure. So all the back house um, archives of your employee history as far as like when you get hired. Um, to when you transfer, if you transfer departments or get promoted, um, get bonuses and merits, and also um, if you decide to leave the company in term. So all that kind of data stored and also um, doing different type of analytics. So, you know, seeing turnover rates with the company, making sure getting all those numbers and, and data together as well. So a lot of back end data can happen with um, operations. Mm -hmm. um, also working through systems, so, you know, platforms as far as like onboarding systems and making mm -hmm. sure, you know, what paperwork gets shot out that once you get that offer from recruiting, you know, that kind of onboarding process of getting your onboarding paperwork completed as well. Right. And there are a lot of tools that a lot of people don't know is there are a lot of internal tools that integrate and work together uh, to ensure that the hiring process runs smoothly, but then also once someone is hired, they're then onboarded. And then that process as an employee begins. And so Correct. there are multiple tools that companies use 
And it's always a plus when you're working for a company that has tools that integrate nicely, um, aren't antiquated and outdated, um, and tools that human resources professionals, wherever you may be on, within that department, can work cohesively together through those tools. Um, a lot of people also ask a lot about recruitment and they mm -hmm. use the term talent acquisition. And so I know uh, that is now the, the sexier term to say recruitment. Yeah. And a lot of companies use it differently, but talent acquisition uh, currently in, in most organizations me simply means recruitment, staffing, hiring, right? Uh, but there are also other areas of human resources that people don't realize are part of our process and certain terms that I know people hear. Uh, and one is an HRBP. Can you yeah. explain a little bit about what an HRBP does and what they're responsible for in the overall organization? Yeah, um, I feel like From this is kind of an agency company to company. Yeah, I, I do feel like this is kind of more of a new role within the last like five years or so. Um, usually we see this at a very high level through companies, but now a lot of uh, this team has kind of branched off to its own um, entity. So the HR business partners, they focus primarily on uh, working with the departments and the business leads of the company. So whether that is, um, you so know. So like a liaison between the business the employees, and then other key departments. Correct, yeah. So their focus is being that resource for those leads and, and the departments. So whether it is, um, you know, seeing what the needs are, if they see that there are, uh, the leaders are inquiring on employees, you know, not necessarily being at the uh, stage to get promoted. Uh, maybe they'll reach out to their business partners to see like, what is it that we can do? Maybe there's a trainings that we're not aware of that maybe you can connect us with, or um, we're noticing a lot of turnover. Maybe the HRBPs can look further into that to see like uh, the data from, you know, the turnover reports or working closely with um, learning and development or even employee relations to see if there's any grievances. So kind of they're that main point of contact with the business to help them, you know, succeed and, and whatever their needs are, they can be that main uh, point of contact for them. Right. And so you mentioned another really interesting team, learning and development. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of companies aren't fortunate to have a learning team, but many are, and we're seeing it more and more. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about learning and development and what that means, at least for the organizations you work for. Yeah, that is a very, uh, kind of a, also a new team within the last maybe seven to 10 years as well. And I definitely think that more companies are finding the value in it. Um, a lot of the times it could be anything from trainings that you can have in, uh, in the office training, someone conducting whether it's soft skills or trainings on you know, how to do public speaking to presenting to doing pitches, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, also, we have, uh, whether it's webinars, providing, you know, webinar trainings or eBooks, um, also doing any type of just overall training through a company, so manager training. So I think that they're seeing the value, a lot, a lot of companies are seeing the value of it. I know maybe a lot of smaller companies or startups might not have as much resources for that, but I do see the, like a lot of companies within the last few years have really kicked in a lot of different type of uh, learning and development programs. Yeah, and it's really interesting because, um, you know, I just did a segment on benefits because I think that that's such an important part of the hiring process and the employee process in terms of a prospective employee making a hiring decision, right? It's important for yeah. them to truly understand and factor in what is this company's benefits package that they're offering, right? Mm -hmm. What you just mentioned in terms of learning and development and that being a component of HR, I think that it's also great to look for companies and, or ask you know, during the interview process whether or not a company has a learning team because I see when it comes to growth, growth is the question that I get all the time, right, as a recruiter. Yep. How can I grow? When will that happen? I know once a prospective employee becomes an employee, growth still remains a priority, right? So then it becomes yep. your issue. They're coming to you as their HR representative saying, hey, when will I be promoted? When will I grow? Well, companies that offer this type of learning and development platform, 
I see that as a way to really offer opportunities for self-directed growth. Because yeah. sometimes there are in-house career or classroom rather sessions, as you mentioned, but then sometimes there are webinars, as you mentioned, but then also tools that you can use to kind of do at your own pace and yeah. at your own pace. You know, if you need some training in Excel, some companies have an Excel training through their learning platform. Yep. Uh, and there are multiple trainings, depending on what your discipline area is, that you can take part in and, and participate in. And so I always kind of push that if I know that a company has that. And when I'm working with my clients, I always kind of let them know to look for that if they're looking for a job to see if that company offers that because those are great ways to really grow and develop as a professional absolutely and i think another thing that a lot of people don't realize too because if you're working at a company a lot of times i'll get asked do you guys you know i'm thinking about going to school to learn more about what i'm doing do you guys offer tuition reimbursement a lot of times some companies do provide that and some don't and for those who don't maybe they do have a learning and development team that they can take advantage of going to those courses that are free to the you know, employee and you know, utilize it. Absolutely. Absolutely, so That's those right. are very um, great things to look into if your company does have a learning development team. Yes, great. So we are all dealing with COVID-19 and uh, you know, it's been tough for so many people. Many people are losing jobs. Many people find themselves in a position where um, they may have, they may still be, an, be employed, but they were uh, hoping to pivot to something next. To yeah. Next. And uh, this is thrown a wrench really in all of our lives in terms of where would we go from here? So, you know, in terms of, I know that you're still working and fortunate to still be employed. In terms of uh, careers and, and companies and, and how they're looking at their employee base, how do you think that this COVID-19 will impact uh, the hiring experience, the growth experience, just the overall employee opportunities? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a good question. I definitely think that we're still looking to see what those results are going to be. Um, I feel that it is going to be a very interesting challenge to to you know some place companies are onboarding still and hiring so having to start a company without ever meeting your team face to face yeah, um, and also training you know sometimes it's hard enough training in person with a team around you and to do it from home with a new computer that you've never really been familiar with uh, making sure that you have the resources i think that that's going to be um, you know very interesting to see how we navigate through that and how teams are really being involved and connected. Um, I also feel that it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, managers really manage, you know, a lot of the times, uh, especially working remote. Uh, there can be a situation where there's too many meetings or not enough meetings, you know, and people feeling, uh, are these meetings necessary? Do I need to be in them? <laughs> um, yes. Or should I be included in them? So I also am curious on a couple things with the whole COVID too is, seeing um, if diversity is going to change um, because we're working, a lot of companies are working remote. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that will be from a recruiting standpoint. You know, if you're going to get more diverse people, knowing that maybe they think, you know, I'm not going to be in a clicky kind of environment if I go to work. Um, mm -hmm. And also if you're retaining more diverse candidate, you know, employees. So yes. I'm, I'm curious to see how that will be working people working remote, if, if they're actually able to work better together. Um, yeah, that'll be that's an excellent point. I mean, you know that I know from working many years in HR, especially on the recruiting end, uh, diversity is so important, but it also takes being resourceful and making sure that you, know, the, you see the value and that you take advantage of opportunities to meet people outside of the comfort zone. Yeah. Right? And sometimes that can be a challenge for hiring managers. You know, yep. I often hear people say they want to have, have someone join the team who they get along with, who they can have drinks with, who yep. can essentially party with outside of work hours. Yeah. That's not how you make an effective hire. Yeah. And I know that that issue often comes up between HR teams uh, and discussions with hiring teams in terms yeah. of what the process should look like, what works, what's fair, and what's not. 
what's legal and what's not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how, how that will be even, you know, by the end of the year. Yeah, it will. It will. But I also think that there are a lot of people who, especially parents, who will feel uh, a little more at ease as we adjust to this new normal and teaching our children from home right? Or even if schools get back into the normal pace and sessions, yeah, many people will still be working remotely. A lot yeah. of companies will not, don't even have plans to return to normal working environments that we've known in the past. Yeah. I mean, I know I, I saw where certain companies are, you know, for sure, moving forward, not going to return to the office. And that's a co huge cost savings. And it makes yeah. sense because I think that this has shown that we can easily do our jobs remotely. But with that in mind, I think that uh, thinking of parents, you know, I'm a parent. Uh, it's, it's always been a challenge sometimes when you have those meetings that may run late, but you know, you need to pick up a child and there are doctor's appointments that all employees face. And so I think that as we're moving into this new work from work from home, working remotely space, that it'll hopefully lessen the stress yeah. of people. Yeah. Who ordinarily would have to come up with excuses to make things that are <laughs> priorities in their real life. Yeah, it will offer for sure some more flexibility. Absolutely. I think, um, and that's so, also an incentive for companies when hiring. Yeah. I think it's going to be even harder for companies who don't have a flexible work environment to hire. Yeah. From this. Yeah, I agree. It's going to definitely change a lot of how companies are hiring and how employees, um, or candidates are looking for places that are going to be hiring. So that's going to be for sure. Um, I, I do want to bring up another thing that I think that will also be interesting, um, yes. especially maybe from an employee relations standpoint. Mm -hmm. I do feel like with companies that are doing the work from home, we will probably see a pivot on um, what kind of grievances come in. So you'll, mm -hmm. we'll probably see less of misconduct, sexual Absolutely. harassment, Harass. you know, mm -hmm. however, um, we might see more of people not feeling that they have the tools to succeed. You know, I think there will be that adjustment period of working remote and trying to navigate and figure out um, solutions um, mm -hmm. in a single environment uh, compared to a team environment, which is, is adaptable. So I think that will I be think interesting. I think that's rectifiable, though. I think that yeah. it will take time and it has to be thought through. Each individual company has to think through what works for them. Yep. Uh, I know I've been on a few calls recently where people wanted monitors and yeah. you know, certain tools that they had in the office and, you know, they wanted to know if they could expense certain things. And yeah. right now there's nothing in place for that to really happen and to get approved. But I think that the companies that do decide to adapt and adjust to, you know, work from home permanently type of platform, yeah, uh, I think that they'll be able to you know, get approval so that people are reimbursed for cell phone usage. The yeah. Negatives would normally be reimbursed for anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And it's uh, interesting because a lot of places, a lot of people, you know, expecting to be out this long. So I don't think a lot of people were equipped to have like a home, a work from home setup already in place. Some people have one already, but some people yeah. don't already have one set up. So that's interesting as well, too. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a lot of going with the flow. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I put together a desk and yep. a chair that's comfortable. You know, you just got to go with the flow. And hopefully there will be more resources for employees, especially as they start new jobs, to be able to get, yeah. um, you know, to factor in ergonomics, to factor in, uh, you know, certain tools and equipment that they may need to make them feel comfortable to come on board. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you as a person and mm -hmm. you're one of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Same with you, girl. <laughs> you just have the perfect balance of fun and seriousness. You know, you're so professional. You um, are so bright, uh, but you have a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> I love that about you. Uh, so I've been very fortunate to know you in that that way. Uh, however, you know, thinking about all the things that we discussed—diversity and inclusion 
adjusting to a new work environment. Um, I'm just curious to know, as an employee personally, like what has been your experience from a challenge standpoint? Um, you know, have you had challenges in the workplace as a woman or a woman of color? Have you had challenges as you've adapted to this new work from home environment? Um, what have some of your challenges been and what are some of the steps you've taken to kind of resolve those uh, so that you remain happy and can focus on doing great work? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, especially being a woman of color, I think some of the challenges that we face um, is constantly feeling that um, you have to be relatable to everyone um, and not having that reciprocated. <laughs> so I think that that's always a challenge. Um, and I think um, being able to navigate through that, um, you know, a lot of the times you can feel alone if you don't have enough of the diversity within your team. So um, that's always kind of been a challenge, especially with HR. It is a pride, you know, predominantly a field that isn't as diverse compared to others. Um, I do think it's gotten a little more diverse, but it's still um, not where I, you know, feel it should be. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of the times, you know, you, you kind of get, used to feeling uh, or being treated a way that you know you've actually gotten used to which is weird uh and i think kind of getting myself Adapting. out of that you just yeah used to having to adapt to an existing infrastructure yes yes like you know and i i've, I've noticed over the years that i have noticed that i have been uh talked to and not talked with you know, so like people don't talk with me, they talk to me. Yes, and yes. it's interesting that I've noticed over the years that, and so I've had to push myself out of that to insert myself more. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it is getting out of that uncomfortable environment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pushing yourself to be more involved. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't expect to, you know, you know, I haven't had to like wait to have someone can, you know, involve me in the situations. You know, I think it is forcing myself to, to be present and be in situations more. So that's Absolutely. something that is a constant, you know, reminder that I have to do with myself that that is still kind of a struggle sometimes. Um, and, and, you know, just making sure that I speak up when I need to. Um, and I think that that's also something that is just kind of a constant thing that I need to remind myself to do. Absolutely. And I think just being aware of the, you know, knowing that you have to adjust, right? You, you just mm -hmm. have to adapt. But I always tell people when you're in situations like that, you always have to still find your voice. Yeah. And that can be a challenge. It can be scary. Yeah. Because we fear if we speak up, that we'll be judged. Mm -hmm. Women of color, sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. Sometimes that will be the judgments will come. But I've learned that in business, I have to do what's best for me. Even when I'm working in a company, it's important to know, okay, what do I want to take away from this situation? Yeah. Right? As a professional, I'm here. I want to be here for the long haul. I may not like every process, but I know what I have to offer and contribute. Yeah. As I continue to offer and contribute my gifts, that is then becoming my, my collateral that I can take, you know, with me when I decide to pivot to my next. Yep. Right? And so I always tell people, if you're unhappy in your job, which I know you're happy, but I meet with people often who, you know, may be ready for a move. Yeah. Right? And, and they're unhappy for many reasons. And many of them are people of color, or just women in general, because I think we all struggle just as women um, in gender roles in the workplace. But I always tell people to, if you're not being asked for your contribution, contribute anyway. Come up with your own projects, create your own documents. I know that you're a master <laughs> at that. You know, if there's something that isn't already existing, create it. Yep. Because that becomes your contribution to the team. And whenever you decide to move on, whoever, you know, wherever this person decides to go next, they can take that with them. Yep. 
Absolutely. That leads to the next part of the discussion that I wanted to have when it comes to obviously pivoting, mm -hmm. but also taking into consideration the importance of pacing yourself properly and prioritizing, right? Yes. Because I hear from people all the time and they're ready to make a move. Their boss did something to mess up and it's the fifth yeah. time and they're ready to make a move and they're just going to jump. And sometimes it makes sense just to jump. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always one to say, <laughs> it makes sense. Do it. <laughs> right? Get to jumping. <laughs> sometimes that's not everyone's situation and they can't always yeah. move immediately, right? So I always tell them to come up with projects, document those projects, because those become your assets, your personal yeah. professional assets, right? That the company can use once you're long gone, but those are also things that you can take with you to the next role. So what are your thoughts on kind of, you know, the employee that wants to pivot and move to their next, but needs to pace themselves properly? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that, you know, do it when you're ready uh, and really ask your those yourself those questions if you are ready you know right. if kind of it is those surface questions if like you know what i'm just not feeling my manager or i'm not feeling my coworker. you know are, are those enough uh that makes you ready to leave this current situation that you're in because you know i've had um I had a mentor to that had mentioned this to me that was like great way to think of things is um your boss might continue to be the same way and that might not change and you might not be happy but you might not be in a position to leave the company right. so instead of trying to make them change what are you going to do you know put it back on yourself I might not be able to change this situation but what can I do whether like you said is there a project that your, I can your do environment, your workspace yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Exactly. Some, you know, might not see the light of day, but you know what? You're working to come up with creative ideas to, um, you know, keep yourself focused and, you know, strengthen your skills. Do the trainings, you know, if there's L&D trainings that your company Absolutely. offers. Use those opportunities. Take advantages to, to grow yourself um, if you have it. You know, so I do think that it's more of what can you do? Like, what are you going to do about your situation that you're in? You know, if you can't change your work environment, um, as far as like, you know, moving to a new company or looking for another job, especially right now with a lot of jobs that aren't hiring, you know, some people that maybe were thinking about pivoting to a new role, they might say, you know what, it's a little unstable. I'm going to just have to write it out to where I'm at right now. What is it that you can do to help still grow, you know, to um, keep your path growing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of the question is coming back to what can you do and what can you raise your hand to do? Yeah, I wish I had someone when I was starting my career help me better prioritize and pace my steps. Because there were a couple companies that I worked at early on that there actually, one was an internship and I uh, should have stayed there a little longer, but I had another internship that came about. And so I immediately jumped because I was like, I want to take it all in. I'm new to LA. I want to move on to the next thing as soon as it comes. And Absolutely. I feel like there's more to still learn at that organization. It may not be time to make a move. Yep. And some people say, you know what, this is a lot of work. I don't want to do it. I want to leave. Um, and some sometimes there's a silver lining there. And yeah, this these are new tasks that I've never exactly had before. So let me take this opportunity to learn them and further enhance my skill set. Absolutely. I mean, I've been in positions in the past where, you know, I had to take on certain um, roles that I was like, I do not want to do this. And I knew when I started HR, there was certain things I did not want to do. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go into that. And you know, I was at a smaller company where, you know, you kind of have to have many hats and I, and I worked on it and, you know, it worked out in my favor because a company after that hired me because of the skill sets I had doing all those extra, um, you know, sensitive. so, I mean, you never know, you know, what, where life will take you and what skills you've learned. Um, even if it's something that you are not interested in learning, it's always good to like, the more you know about what your role and um, the supporting roles around you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the more that it will benefit you down the line. Absolutely, and the more experience you gain, right? From those mm -hmm. things 
you love and those things you don't love. Mm-hmm. Those it, it helps you really define who you are as a professional, what you want to do, what yeah. you don't want to do, what you yeah. will do versus what you will not do. Yeah. And, you know, of course, earlier on in both of our careers, we just had to take whatever we could get, you know, yep. and, and we learned from those situations and it leveraged us to the next, right? Absolutely. It's amazing to be at a point in your career where you're like mid-level career and we're both at a place where it's like, okay, when I make my next move, I know that I will need to be able to do this. And if this company won't allow that to be a part of my daily work experience, then this is probably not the right place for me. And feel yep. okay and comfortable, confident knowing that, yeah. and comfortable walking on away or moving on to another opportunity that better aligns with who you are personally. As Absolutely. A yeah at your overall lifestyle yeah absolutely i mean i i you know there's always opportunities to learn and grow and um you know you can see everything as um, a positive experience and a growth experience um and if you continue through that path you'll succeed like you know you just got to stay positive and there's you know a job That's is a job ha- yeah yeah there's always gonna be moments where we love our job and we can't stand like yeah, i just need to go home uh but at the end of the day, you know, I just think that the more you learn and the more you just continue to be eager to grow and whether it's you growing on your own or with the company, you know, you will get to where you want to go. Agree. Just at all with all that you've accomplished. I know your backstory and so seeing where you are today, it's just so impressive and I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. You know, you have been also a great a uh, friend um, and you know working together was awesome but you know you're just even a better friend so I love that mm-hmm. we've been able just to stay connected and um, you know see each other grow and I'm extremely proud of you and so happy that you're doing this platform as well so you've been nudging um, me to do this for so long <laughs> <laughs> so thank you no here we I'm, are yes girl <laughs> And that's how it happens. You just got to keep pushing, keep going, pace yourself properly. Think of the pivot, have it in mind, know where you want to go, pace yourself properly, and then prioritize and plan your move. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think another good thing too is also find, you know, if you have an opportunity to find a good mentor, you know, at your job, and it doesn't have to be in the same department that you're in. Yes. Um, sometimes it is good to see it from a different perspective yes. if someone's not sitting right next to you. So I think if you have that opportunity to do that, you know, take advantage of it for sure. Yes, absolutely. That's a great point. It's been so advantageous for me to have mentors throughout the years who have nothing to do with HR. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them do, but mm-hmm. many of them are in other business areas and it's really just expanded, you know, just my perspective and, and helped me to understand the the greater picture, the bigger picture of business, even better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, Good, well, thank you so much. And I appreciate you coming on the Candid Recruiter Show. Thank you, Darla. (laughs) And when all of this is said and done, I look forward to getting together. Yes. Coffee, cocktail, whatever it may be. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. Uh, I wish I could give you a big hug, but I'll give you a virtual hug Thanks instead. <laughs> Thanks so much for imparting your knowledge here. And I'll see you soon. Tanisha. All right. Thank you.